fellas, today is an absolutely amazing day to be a fan of AMD. Let's talk about it. Before that, this video is brought to you by VIPCDKDeals.com. CDK Deals is a website dedicated to getting you the best prices on games and software, and right now you can get a Windows 10 Pro OEM key for an insanely low price. Just find the best price and apply my special discount code GPC20 for an additional 30% off. You can also check out securely with PayPal, and once the payment is cleared, you should get access to the code both in your account as well as in your email. In order to activate the new copy of Windows 10, just search Activate Under Windows and type in your key. So if you want to learn more, be sure to click the link in the description below. Let's start off by talking about, yes, AMD CPUs could be getting a substantial performance increase at no cost to you. Now, this information comes from a videocards.com article, and they're reporting on what is originally a YouTube video from Hardware Unboxed, where they did indeed go ahead and test the new Windows Insider preview build of 24H2. Now, the 24H2 update to Windows 11 will be coming out as far as I'm aware sometime between September and October but you might be asking why does this matter well in the very very long drama of trying to get to the bottom of why Zen 5 isn't scaling well for regular desktop apps and gaming especially there's been a lot of investigation done by AMD as it turns out there will be an update in the new build of Windows which will be substantially improving performance to both Zen 5 and apparently Zen 4 and potentially Zen 3 as well. Hardware Unboxed investigated it and did find that the 9700X gets an 11% increase in performance at 1080p, which is absolutely crazy for a Windows update. And then the 7700X gets a 10% increase. Now, even if you're on Intel, I also have great news as while I didn't see them do a full in-depth dive into Intel yet, and I do believe they will be doing that, they did find that, well, in this one game, Gears 5, it got around a 20% increase in performance on the 1% lows versus the 1% lows on the current build of Windows 11. So if you're not on Windows 11 already, you may want to consider jumping on when the 24H2 build does arrive because this is really huge news. I mean, if some games are getting a 20% increase, you're probably gonna wanna be a part of that. But now let's go ahead and talk about something that I am very, very excited about, and that's RDNA 4, as yes, we finally got some more information about RDNA 4, and I have a lot to go over when it comes to these new GPUs. We're gonna talk about the specs, the price, the release date, everything you want to know let's start off by where this originated over on videocards.com where apparently a geekbench entry of one of these new rdna4 gpus was spotted and it does confirm a lot of the information that's been going around specifically the core counts of the gpu and this does appear to be the 8700 xt with 56 compute units and it does appear that it's also running at a far lower boost clock as this is clearly an engineering sample now it does appear this is a sample that's been nerfed probably intentionally to try and avoid final performance numbers getting out as the performance numbers themselves were not good at all. However, this did lead me down a rabbit hole of investigating RDNA 4 more and thus I've actually been able to collect so much information about RDNA 4 from various leaks as well as things that I'm hearing that I'm pretty confident I have basically all the information or there about on RDNA 4 at this point in time. And let me tell you guys, I think this is gonna be a really good generation of GPUs. I do also wanna mention that recently, the YouTuber Moore's Law is Dead also put out a ton of information on RDNA 4, and he also did confirm many of the things that I've already heard, such as 64 CUs as the largest GPU and 2.9 to 3.2 gigahertz for those clocks. But now let's go ahead and take a look at all the information that I put together as I not only have the 8800 XT, but also the 8700 XT and the 8600 XT. Let's start off with the 8600 XT. This is likely to have 32 compute units and a boost clock of up to 3.2 gigahertz. And this is gonna be the weirdest one here, guys, as we don't have the total memory confirmed here yet. I'm not entirely sure if they're gonna be going for 8, 12, or 16 gigabytes. However, I do believe there are gonna be eight and 16 gigabyte variants for you to choose from. I just can't confirm it at this point in time. 
Also, I do believe you will be seeing 320 gigabytes per second of total memory bandwidth on this GPU and a rough TDP of 175 watts. Now, we will discuss the roughly, I guess, exact performance of these GPUs in just a second, but as you can see, these charts will reflect roughly their performance based on where I put them from top to bottom. Now, next up, let's talk about the 8700 XT. And this is gonna be one that I think a lot of people are gonna be very, very interested in. I believe, again, 56 compute units, this time running at around three gigahertz for the boost clock and 16 gigabytes of GDDR6 running at 20 gigabits per second on a 256 bit bus for 640 gigabytes per second with a TDP of roughly 225 watts. And then finally, the flagship one they'll have available with the full 64 CUs is the 8800 XT, 3.2 gigahertz and the same memory configuration, but a TDP of 265 watts. So all those specs look pretty good, but what about the performance, the release date and the price? Well, I do believe here, guys, that we are gonna be seeing, starting off with the 8600 XT, a price of roughly $300, and performance is gonna be a little bit lower than the 7800 XT, probably roughly on par with the 7700 XT, and a release date, I believe, sometime between the end of this year and quarter one of 2025. Now, next up, we have the 8700 XT. I believe this will jump to $400 roughly and will have actually higher performance than the 7800 XT, which is pretty good. And a release date again, quarter four of this year to quarter one of 2025. And then finally, the 8800 XT, I do believe will be coming in at roughly $500, $499, and should have around actually close to 40% higher performance on paper than the 7800 XT. That's a pretty massive jump and actually would put it ahead of the 7900 XT, roughly somewhere thereabouts with the RTX 4080, just behind the 4080 Super. And again, end of this year or beginning of next year. And with that being the case, well, you could be talking about if you just wait a little bit longer instead of spending $1,000 on a 4080, you could effectively get a 4080 for just $500. And not only that, but I'm hearing that the ray tracing performance is supposed to be much, much better on RDNA 4 as well. And I do believe many other leakers, including Moore's Law is Dead, would agree with me there. And he did also mention in his recent video that AMD would actually potentially be launching RDNA 4 in high volume this year. So with that being the case, again, I do think it is worth waiting at least to see more information if you're considering a 4080 before pulling the trigger as if you could get a 4080 roughly in terms of performance, even if it falls short just a bit. Well, even if that's the case, rough 4080 performance for half the price thereabouts is gonna be an excellent purchase, especially if you only have to wait a few more months to find out more information. But hey, that's just what I think. Do you think the AMD really will give you a 4080 for half the price, or do you think that's gonna fall far short and be too expensive? Let me know your guys' thoughts in the comments below, and of course, I'll see you in the next video. If you made it to the end of the video, be sure to drop a like. Every time you do so, AMD and NVIDIA release new GPUs. Also, if you want to see more, check out one of these related videos. You won't be disappointed.